Hello everyone, I'm Emma and welcome back to my channel. I can't believe we've already hit 5,000 subscribers. I only put the post out for 4,000 like two weeks ago, so we're growing at an unbelievable rate and I couldn't be more grateful. So thank you everyone for your support so far, it means the world. And thank you everyone for your suggestions of what you would have liked to see for this kind of video as well. There were a few suggestions asking for a Q&A, but also one more specifically asking for a Q&A whilst decorating a farm. So I thought it might be fun to decorate our expanded farm because obviously I did some decoration here and there, but I didn't put a huge amount of time and effort into it, so I thought this would be the perfect opportunity. Before we get into the questions and eventually show off the final farm, I will clarify that I am not the best at decorating farms. I'm not someone who's had a huge amount of experience with it, so um, don't expect too much. I did my best. <laughs> But I hope you like it either way, so I think it's time we get into some questions. Fanta asked, What upcoming games am I excited to play, either on the channel or privately? I'm looking forward to seeing some more content. First of all, thank you for your support, Fanta. I really appreciate it. What games am I excited to play? Okay, so in terms of like looking forward to games, I'm not someone who um, kind of keeps up with every little bit of news when it comes to new releases. I usually rely on Michael for that. Which, if you don't know, by the way, Michael's my husband. Um... <laughs> Obviously being a Stardew channel though, I definitely know I'm excited for Haunted Chocolatier when that does come out as well. And I think that's the same for a lot of you guys too. The other main game that I'm excited about that I know that's coming out is Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. I played a little bit of Zelda Breath of the Wild sort of a few years back and then I didn't really touch it. So I got rid of the game having like literally not played it in probably over a year and then recently I feel like everyone started streaming Breath of the Wild again so I picked it back up and I've been playing it again, obviously off camera. I'm really enjoying getting through that, although the puzzles do get the better of me sometimes. For those two particular games, I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to do them on the channel because I don't know how well they would fit. Maybe I'll put some feelers out sort of close to the time when they're coming out. I mean, Haunted Chocolatier definitely, right? Because Stardew, but not so sure about Tears of the Kingdom. Completely Immensely said, Congratulations on 4K, Emma. You've worked hard. Thank you. My question is, besides Stardew, what are my favourite games? Ooh. Okay, at the moment, I think in general, kind of of all time, one of my favourite games has to be Minecraft. It's something that clearly I keep coming back to. Obviously, we've got the new series starting up, which I am very excited about. But that game's been a part of my life since like 2013, so it's pretty significant. Wilwyn said, Congrats on the 4K. Thank you so much, Wilwyn, and thank you for being a channel member too. My question is, are you going to do collabs with any creators from the same community? Yes, that's something I'm definitely looking into. There have been some discussions, but I won't spoil anything yet. It's going to be a little bit of time yet, but yeah, just look forward to it. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to spoil anything. Very ironic noodle said, congrats on 4K, Emma. You should be super proud of yourself. Thank you so much. If it's not too personal, I was wondering how you and your husband met. I started watching your channel just before you went on your honeymoon. Ooh, okay. So, um, we met like a few years ago now, uh, Back when I was streaming on Twitch, I was using a different username, which is very cringe, so I'm not going to say what it is. Some of you might know it. And at the time, I was very much just getting into Elder Scrolls Online. It's another game I really very much love, but again, I haven't played it in quite a while. I was a complete noob who didn't really like know what I was doing or what to expect or anything. I kind of just jumped in blind. And Michael kind of appeared in one of my streams and literally guided me through the entire game, along with some other people that we were friends with at the time. We became friends for kind of like a good while beforehand, but yeah, things just kind of grew from there. Kakao Masapan Official, I'm really sorry if I mispronounced your name, has actually asked a few questions here. So, first one is, do I have a favourite Stardew Valley NPC, both from the original game and the mods? Ooh, that's difficult, okay. I think my favourite vanilla NPC would have to be Abigail. She makes me laugh with the fact that she obviously eats rocks. I also love the whole backstory that she could potentially be related to the wizard. And of course, she's a gamer, so what's not to love there? Mods wise? I think even though I married Victor in my expanded playthrough, my other favourite would probably have to be Sophia. I feel like as kind of her story progresses as you get to know her a little more, she just feels very kind of like lovely and relatable and you just want to like help her, you know? And the pink hair is really a vibe, I really wish I could pull that off. As for other mods, other than Zuzu City, which at the moment I don't really have too many fun feelings towards any of those NPCs, but I haven't explored mods like East Scarp or Ridgeside Village, so I've yet to meet any of them. The next question is, what's my favourite food and drink? Okay, favourite drink, I'm going to start off very easy. Coffee, in any form that it comes. Every day I start my morning with a black coffee. You can't actually see the coffee in there. <laughs> I cannot not start my day without a coffee, just because it's easiest to make at home, but... I will still like things like um, flavoured lattes and such, it's pumpkin spice latte season, but I haven't really been out to Starbucks very much to get it, so I've only had like one, I think, this year so far, and we're near the end of September. 
But I think drink wise, if we're going to combine some of my favourite things, bubble tea is something I crave often and don't have very often. So if I was to have like, I don't know, a latte with uh, tapioca pearls in it, which is like the actual like boba circles, that I feel like would be my ideal drink. Food wise, uh, that's difficult. I get very hyper fixated on certain types of food, so I'll go through phases of eating the same thing for like a meal, one of my meals pretty much most days until I suddenly get bored of it and then forget it exists for six months and then the cycle restarts again. So at the moment one of my favourite things is bagels and usually I just toast them and put a bit of uh, butter and jam on them but that tends to cycle through with like crumpets which to be fair I always have to have crumpets in the freezer I can't not have crumpets in the freezer I need them available as soon as I fancy them. I think those are my main favourites. And last question from the same person what is my favourite colour? This is something that I always have to really think about because I used to have it very much ingrained into my head that my favourite colour was like a pastely mint green sort of shade. But then as time goes on, I feel like I realise that I gravitate more towards like pastel pink. Clearly I'm not wearing anything pastel pink today, but my old mouse, keyboard and chair and headset were all pastel pink at one point. And of course you can see it on the duvet cover in the background too. <laughs> So yeah, I think probably realistically my favourite colour is like a pastel pink. We also had another question from Fanta. So Fanta asked, do I get burnout from some games or gaming in general sometimes? I had this with Animal Crossing and sometimes struggled to get back into the flow. Animal Crossing is definitely a big one for me. Um, I had a huge obsession with it when it first came out and then I played it for a while, went off it for a bit and then I got obsessed with it again in the months leading up to the huge, I think it was 2.0 update, right? Like, was it last year? I think it was last year. And before the DLC came out, and then once it came out, I was obsessed with it for a good while after that. Um, I don't have all that many hours in the game compared to a lot of people, but I enjoyed it very much nonetheless. I was definitely feeling the burnout though. Um, there are definitely other games that I do start to feel the burnout with. Surprisingly, I'm not burnt out with Stardew yet, even though I've been playing it a lot, especially this year. But then in saying that, realistically, I actually spend more time editing the gameplay than I do actually playing the game. So I think that kind of helps because by the time I finish editing the video I'm kind of itching to get back into it, especially when it comes to like the 100 days things. And I think it's also the same kind of things with any MMO really, like a lot of the time I can really hammer it, make so much progress and then I just get to a point where I'm like I don't want to touch the game right now. And a lot of the time it's not even a conscious thought right, you just kind of like, you play it every day and then one day you just don't and then you literally don't either forever or for months. Is that just me? I, I don't think that's just me. <laughs> In terms of gaming in general, no, not really, to be honest. Um, similar to kind of what I said about games like Stardew, I do spend more time editing than I do actually playing games, but I do still play some games for myself. Like at the moment, the main game that I'm playing for myself is Breath of the Wild. It's probably also one of the things with my ADHD where I have to have kind of like a minimum amount of stimulation. And one of the ways that achieves what I need from that is gaming. And even then it's mostly not just gaming. I also have to have a video or something on in the background. So yeah, definitely no burnout from gaming in general. But I'll never force myself to play a game. That is probably the one thing I will say. Silent Satyrus asked, This is the question I ask for every icebreaker. What do I think of elephants? Oh my god. Elephants are amazing. I think they're really cool creatures. Honestly, I don't know a deep amount of information about them, but I do think that they're, first of all, cute, but also not to be messed with, because we know that they can mess you up if you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, or, you know, do anything you shouldn't be around them. And for our final question, we have Mariana, who is my modern channel member, so thank you so much for all of your help and support. What was it that made me start streaming? I started streaming sometime sort of a few years ago now. This was only back on Twitch when I was under my old username and I wasn't really making any YouTube content at the time. So back then, my mental health was kind of in a weird place and I was trying to find something that I could pour my sort of more positive energy into and give myself something good to focus on. So I'd been on Twitch kind of for a while, just like chatting here and there to people uh, in streams and stuff. And there was one or two people who did encourage me, like having talked about maybe wanting to start, they encouraged me to actually like just, you know, go ahead and just, just do it. At the end of the day, it's one of those things that you don't know if it's going to work if you don't just start. And I was putting in a lot of hours into streaming back then and slowly over time kind of learned about you know how to keep talking and what bits of my gear need upgrading because obviously back then I was just using a Razer headset microphone it did not sound good it sounded really terrible and even though I had like a little bit of growth back then I feel like because I never really found my place with what kind of content I wanted to make I feel like growth wise I didn't really get anywhere 
I then met a little community of Minecraft players who were, at the time, into things like the Mine Colonies mod and other modern Minecraft things too, but I started making some Mine Colony style content back then, which I think is all privated on my channel because it's under my old username, but that taught me how to make videos and edit them, how to deal with the title and the thumbnail and the description etc. Albeit not very well, but it still taught me quite a lot of things. And I sort of got into the flow back then of what was my editing style. Now again, I didn't grow a huge amount back then either because if you're starting out as just a Minecraft channel, at least for me, obviously Minecraft on its own is very, 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 very saturated. So that was always going to be hard to like get somewhere with. Then it was sometimes towards the end of last year that I started getting back into farm style games instead. And at the time, a game called Sunhaven was just about released in early access. So I tried doing a playthrough of that back then and... Again, it was kind of spending time like refining my ways of editing and things like that, which still took me a long, long time back then. But I was also juggling all of this around a full time job, which was kind of a struggle. And then I ended up being made redundant from said job at the end of last year slash the beginning of this year. Um, and obviously been through a lot of life changes since then with having to move a few times. But my channel and streaming and stuff was something I really didn't want to drop. So I really made it work because it was something I was genuinely wanting to like put a lot more time into. And around that time is when I started finding the 100 days of Stardew Valley videos. And I kind of fell down this rabbit hole of literally watching through everyone's. And that's what gave me the idea to do my 100 days of Stardew Valley expanded series. And obviously that is what really like got us going with this channel and how a lot of people found me here. And back then that also really made me realize how much I love Stardew Valley. Prior to that, I played about 60 hours on the Switch and I'd only put in two hours on the PC. So I've gone from two hours to like 500 and something over the course of the year. So yeah, that's kind of the story of how I started streaming and also kind of how I continued with it and how we adapted over time as well. So yeah, those are all the questions I was asked. Thank you so much to everyone who submitted a question. I had a lot of fun with this style of video. So with that, I'll show you the final screenshot of the completed farm with all the decorations that I've added. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Again, I didn't want something that was really highly decorated, mainly because I'm not very good at that kind of thing, but also I like the kind of like wild and perhaps sort of easygoing kind of look that it has, but the expanded decorations that are available really, really did help with that. I feel like it just makes it look a little bit more finished, you know? Now I have one final question for you guys. Obviously, as our community is growing, I would love a little like sort of nickname to be able to refer to you guys and I'm struggling to come up with ideas. So let me know in the comments what you think we can call our little community. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, please do hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much to my channel members and I will see you in the next video. Bye!